I want to be fully transparent here with you. I am I'm here to repent for my sins because over the course of your career, you know, some of your foibles, some of your mistakes, we have played on the air. We had a caller once upon a time. This was way long ago from Cleveland who had ripped all of the Browns quarterbacks and in doing so had mentioned that you were a bum. And so we had played that after mistakes or losses or interceptions, what have you. And when I heard that we were going to have you on the show, I said, I can't hide from that. I can't not tell Brandon up front that this is what we have done here. So I just, I've come holding my tail in my hands. I wanted to say, we're sorry here on the DA show. Well, you're better than most. Most people would hide from it. So no, I didn't know. No hard feelings. I, you know, it is what it is. I, you know, there's times I didn't play well enough, and you know, that's that's part of it. And that's just part of part of the world we live in. And you know, if I would have played better at times, especially in Cleveland, I played decent everywhere else. But if I would played better in Cleveland, then uh, then I, you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't have had to do it to me. So no big deal. It, it's all good. No no sweat. I appreciate that. And I wanted it. I always think about this because you were such an incredible <laughs> two way athlete that you could get drafted in Major League Baseball. You could play in the NFL. You could be a first round draft pick. You set all these passing records at Oklahoma State. And then idiots, you know, fans and media can call you a bum. Now, I couldn't have started on my high school football team, let alone started in the NFL. When something like that happens, does it annoy you going like, oh my God, these people have no idea how hard it is even to get here? Or is it like swatting a fly on an elephant? You're like, oh, I don't even care what people say because it's so off the mark. Yeah, no, I don't. I could care less. I mean, you know, I, I tell people, I, I wish I could invent like a, a simulator type deal where you, you know the average fan can just go sit in the simulator and, and feel what it feels like to stand in the pocket when you know the pocket's collapsed and you got to get rid of the ball on third and ten to, to win a game. I mean, you know, one, I'd be rich, but two, people would really understand, you know, how just how difficult it is. But no, I, I don't care. I mean, like I said, playing quarterback and especially in the NFL is the hardest position in sports and. You know, it's um, you know, it's just it's not easy. You know, so it it, it doesn't honestly bother me. I, mean, I think every other quarterback will probably tell you the same thing. Um, it's it's tough back there. You know, especially if, if you're not on a good team and you don't have a bunch of guys you can really rely on, and you know, you just kind of dealt a, a, a short deck. A short deck. It makes it tough. But yeah, it's it is what it is, man. Like I said it. it uh, you know, I, I know there's a lot of passionate fans out there that that really enjoy it, and the first person always gets criticized and crucified is is the quarterback and next is the head coach. So it is uh, it's just part of part of playing quarterback in the NFL. Man, I'm so glad we finally got a chance to catch up and have you on the show. Thanks for being so diplomatic. Thanks for being so professional. You know, if you didn't throw an underhanded pass for an interception, I wouldn't have had an excuse to actually play that highlight. So that is kind of your fault as well, you know. Well, if I could have any <laughs> throwback, that would be it. I mean, that's that was that was boneheaded. I I, I regret that one, but uh, it is what it is. Can't take it back. So yeah. The, you listen, you're not you're never gonna hurt my feelings, so you can you can crush me all you want, no big deal.